Hey everybody, how are you? It's Leslie from Scrap and Life Away, and I am here, better late than never, to do a prompt for my creative year. This was due back in June, and life really got away from me, and, um, you know, which sometimes happens. There's been a lot of things going on in my personal life, and uh, but I really, really wanted to um, to do this prompt. The prompt is who occupies your space? Well, my space is my heart. So I thought I would do an interactive um, piece about who occupies my heart, which is my space. So what I'm going to do is there's going to be a couple of different layers to this project. And the first, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue down some gears. These are um, really inexpensive gears that I got at Michael's um, from their bead landing. They're, like I said, they're very inexpensive. Um, it's like $3 maybe, not even, and you get 90 pieces. See that? I mean, look at them. They cut very easily with um, Tim Holtz's Knife, uh, knife, good grief. See, I can't even talk. Let me find one that's already open. Just to show you how easy these cut with um, his scissors. Like, let's take this big one. And I am just going to cut right down the middle. Look at that. Cuts easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now I have arthritis in my hands really bad. So for me to be able to do this says a lot. So if you're going to um, pick up these kind of gears and if you need to cut them to fit, especially because I need to fit the gears around the curved edges of my heart, um, I would really suggest using these kind of scissors. Um, and they, they will be listed along with all of my other supplies, um, with links down below, um, in my Amazon store. So if you want a pair, you can just click on the link and pick some up at Amazon. Um, so what I'm, I know it's going to be really boring to watch me glue these all down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to do some peeling of the cardboard back here because I'm going to kind of, um, grunge this up a little bit. So I've traced around where my heart is. If you can see that, it's lightly traced. So I'm just going to start peeling back my cardboard and I'll pop back in here and there um, for you to see. But in the meantime, let's just get to business and get going. So let me get my supplies together and we'll be off to the races. I have gone ahead and laid out my gears to make sure I had enough that they were cut all to match each uh, puzzle piece. And I also went ahead and pulled out my, um, my Liquitex Super Heavy Matte Gel. And this will make sure that the metal pieces um, adhere nice and tight to the paper. I'm just about to put the last two gears on here and just in case you were wondering um, how I knew where to lay all these out at oops wait a minute my phone's going a little crazy here go back to photos um, what I do come on is I take a picture of I lay it all out and I take a picture of it and then just set it in front of me so that way I know where to lay things out at um, a lot of times when you're designing, that's a really great idea. When you lay something out, you just kind of, you know, take a picture of how you, how you have it so you can disassemble it and then glue it back together. Cause sometimes you need to move things around and you're not really sure and you don't want to glue anything into place, um, until you, you know, you're sure where you want it. So I'm sorry if this white paper is not showing up very well. It's kind of glaring a little bit. I don't know why, but that's all right. This paper is not, this is not going to stay this color. 
hint, hint. I'm going to put this down here. And then I just kind of dab the top just to get some of the excess off. I'm just using a baby wipe. And uh, like I said, the Liquitex and a cheap paintbrush. So then, now this is the last, last one to go on. I guess it would help if I kept it in the camera view for you, huh? I'm just kind of painting it on, um, not real, not real thick, but just enough that it's going to stick. And then I'm just going to kind of dab the top of it to make sure that the uh, the holes are covered, are not covered. Sorry. And then I'm just going to let that dry. Now this is still kind of wet, but here you can see. I have all my metal gears all um, all on here. And now for stability, um, I'm going to glue it onto another piece of cardstock just to make it a little bit more stable. But before I do that, I need to cut some holes in here for my handles. So let me get... Um, Oh, and before I do that, I'll show you. I'm just going to use this um, really thin, if I can get it open. The color is navy. Um, I guess the ideal color would be to do black, but I don't have it in black. So, you know, you use what you got. And this is what I got. And I got this in Happy Mail. So, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to be making handles for my puzzle pieces and I'm going to be using this to do that but I need to make some holes in here in order to do that before I glue it onto the back so let me get that started and we'll be right back okay I've already gotten five of the six little um, poles attached here I'm attaching them with the Tim Holtz Ideology um, Tiny Attacher. And what I'm going to do, well, first I'm going to bring it in close. Well, this is so close, and I hate for it to glare too much for you. Just so you can see how these tabs are in here. And they're these ends here are all stapled but they're all going to get covered up so you're not going to really see them so what I'm going to show you I'm going to take my exacto knife and I've already made a little mark right here so I'm going to go ahead and pierce this so now I've got a little hole here and actually I want my ribbon to go this way So I'm just going to make this so I can get the ribbon in there. Put this back on. Haha. -ha. Be careful with these. I have cut myself with them and they are um, they cut you pretty good. So be careful with your tools. All right. I hope that's out far enough for you. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bend this piece in half like this. Like this and such. And then I am going to take, sometimes that hole needs just a little bit of help to slide these in. Nope, not quite there, still working on it. little wiggle there we go got it all right now to try and keep it right about the same length that I have all the other tabs it's right about there 
Oh. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to staple that with this. And you just have to kind of use your best guess as to where those are going to be. Not bad. Got it pretty much right on the money. Okay, right now I'm taking an X-Acto knife and I'm just cutting along where I have outlined my heart because I'm going to peel away some of the paper on this corrugated piece of cardboard but I don't want to cut where the heart is because that is the platform for where our steampunk heart with um, our steampunk puzzle heart. Is that what we're going to call it? It's the compartment heart that will show where our um, what we hold in our heart. So I'm just gonna, I'm just going to start peeling now. I can peel. Oh, look at that! See, it goes right up to the. I can even use this a little bit. Yeah. Just to peel. Oh, look at that! It'll just peel that right away. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to finish peeling all this off and I'll be back. This was so much fun. Actually, this is very cathartic. Just sit here and peel paper like this. Awesome. I've got a, you know what? Instead of using that, I think I'm going to use my Tim Holtz poker because I can just go right under like that and then pull it up. Yeah that's going to work much better. Okay, awesome. I'll see you when I'm all done with this. Here is the, the heart on corrugated paper. Corrugated cardboard. Sorry. So I was able to totally peel away all of the paper. So it just left this corrugated part here. You can see there's a heart. The heart's right here. And the there are little marks here for a reason because I'm going to be putting straps there. Um, and I did put some gesso on it um, just to prep the surface because cardboard is very, is um, it just soaks up your, it'll just soak up your paint really, really fast. So I went ahead and prepped that surface by using gesso. And I did use the acrylic gesso by um, Dale Rowney. Um, I do have um, my own homemade gesso, but this happened to be right next to me. And um, I also just want to use it up. Um, so that's what I use there. So I'm going to set this up over here. The next thing that I did was actually we'll go ahead and leave that there the heart that is going to go on top of this that is um here's what this looks like let me bring this up so you can see it can you see it's crackled oh, isn't that cool so cool it is so so cool and let me explain to you see that's going to go down here like that let me explain to you how I did that this process of crackling um, first thing I did was put down some just plain old black craft paint by deco art let that dry then I put down by Americana weathered wood. I did not put it on thick. I just put on a thin coat, just a thin coat. 
and then I let that dry overnight okay so then this morning when I very first got up um, I then took the Christmas red by deco art and with my paintbrush I painted it on and then just let it go and this is what it does it is so cool now remember there was another heart that I had that was um, going to go on this <laughs> and here it is basically what it is is it's numbered on the back so that way I know where it goes on my heart and let me see yeah Leslie how does it go on that heart <laughs> oh my okay I'm doing it backwards I'm sorry it does go like this and I'll show you why in just a moment I'm like wait a minute something is not right here something is not right with this picture and I'm just showing I am just throwing this on here quickly so that you can get an idea of what I'm going to do yeah it would help see I'm not a good puzzle I'm not good with puzzles that's okay this is just to give you a general idea of what I'm going to be doing see so those are going to go on there like that now wait you see this <laughs> so remember there's going to be flaps coming out so they're going to be there for a reason no way do you see this okay remember the gears all right I painted it with just black craft paint and what I did is it's all taped together so each piece matches these here so these will get glued on top of there but this way I know which one goes on which piece because like I said I'd, I'd screw it up but look at that so and as you can see there's a couple of white spots here and there that's why when you're painting something you want to just keep turning it and turning it and turning it so you make sure you get all the spots you're still gonna miss some and you know what that's just the that's just the way it goes but that's okay because I'm gonna put others ooh yeah um, I'm gonna put some other stuff on here so let me lay this right here for you I'm gonna move this stuff out of my way let me get my products together and we'll get started okay getting a little sidetracked here I got a little ahead of myself so before we start working on this I need to get this done because I need to get it I need to let the glue dry because these are the little straps that are gonna hold the puzzle pieces in um, the finish that I did on this here the rusty background Isn't that look cool um, don't worry I will show you how I did that because I will be doing that on another piece but right now I just want to show you how I'm going to um, if I can get my glue out goodness gracious see I, I had it whoops there we go now it's coming out one these are just three inch strips of the um, ribbon that I used to make the tabs on the puzzle pieces I hope y'all can hear me sorry and I'm gluing them out because they're going to bend over and hold puzzle pieces in and I'm sorry if my hands are really shaky I had a little too much coffee this morning I was enjoying a quiet Saturday morning and a 
end up drinking a little too much coffee, which then makes my hands shake, but that's okay. It happens. All right. So now that I've got glue all over that, I'm going to put my last three globs right here. One, two, three. And we're going the wrong way. It needs to go this way. I do have quite the mess going on here on my desk. And I would not have it any other way. And just as I counted, I do have one extra, which is exactly the way I did it on purpose. And actually, I, I did, just in case I messed one up. Come on, stay on there, you silly thing. All right. And as always, 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 I have on hand tons of baby wipes. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, I am going to let this dry for a little bit. See how that's drying so nicely. And then I'm going to take this, and this is going to go on top. How cool is that? Yeah. Okay, now that that's all done, I need to glue this down on top of here. So what I need to do now, move some of this stuff out of my way. I swear, as I create my space for creating gets smaller and smaller and smaller because I just get everything out. All right, so I'm getting out my Liquitex um, Matte Super Heavy Gel. So, and I want to put this on here generously. I don't use my best brushes when I'm putting this on because it it's a glue. and it gets kind of icky but I do soak all of my brushes good and bad um, in water that has a little bit of Murphy's oil soap in it um, that's a trick that I learned from Gina Ahrens um, that's how she cleans all of her brushes and I have actually taken a brush that got stuck with paint on it and it had, it literally had, the paint was just dried onto it. It was just like solid paint. And I soaked it in straight Murphy's oil soap for about mm, three days maybe. Because, you know, God forbid we give up, you know, we lose a, a brush to something. And that brush is as soft and supple as it was the day I bought it. All right, here we go this down on here just like this alright now what I'm gonna do is for you it'll be the snap of a finger for me, it'll be a couple of hours because I want this to dry really well. Of course, baby wipes. When I'm creating, baby wipes are never far from me. I'm just kind of wiping up a little bit of the excess that's coming out here. It will dry clear, but it doesn't hurt to pull a little bit up. Okay, but as I said, I'm going to lay something heavy on top of this just so that it gets a really good stick and then when I am done with that, I will come back and we're going to work on this, but first I am going to go have a date with my husband and go out to dinner. So I will see you when I get back.
Okay, hi everybody. I am back. I'm ready to go. Now, let's see here. I have this laid out and I have my pieces laid out up over here in the order um, that they need to be laid out on. And I'm only going to take you through the first part of this because once I do one, you'll kind of get the idea of it. And I'm sure you're not going to want to sit here and watch me glue down piece six pieces of paper that's kind of crazy all right so what I'm gonna do I've got this set down right where I want it this is gonna be my first tab and I only want it on the paper the number I don't want it on the um, the red heart part, just this part right here. I'm going to do every other one for right now, just so I can get something down here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and attach the rest of these to this. All right, I have these all on here. And then once I got them on, I noticed that these were too tight, so I had to cut the end ones so that these would flip up. So let's see, like that. Some of these I may have to repaint the underside, but it's still on here really good with the uh, with the one ribbon. Now, so what I'm going to do is set this aside. Boom. And I'm going to bring this out. All right, these are Viva Inca Gold Metallic Rubs. And this one I think is Gunmetal. Is that what it's called? Oh. Hamatite? I don't know, a hamatite. And this one, of course, is silver. Now, um, these dry up really, really easy. I've had them forever. Okay. You see they're hard as a rock. But that's okay. Because... Yep, see this one's hard as a rock too. All I'm going to do is, this is just plain old water in here. Now, some people say, don't do that, you're going to make it mold. You know what? These are probably four or five years old. Um, they have been used. I spray water on them all the time. Whenever I use them, they have not molded on me yet. So now watch, they'll mold on me now that I saw that. Right, so I'm going to spray, spray some water on there. I'm going to spray some water on here. I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. I'm just lightly going over. Actually, you know what? I should probably do the silver first and then that. Okay, hold on a second. It doesn't really matter. Because these are kind of the original colors of the metal. I'm here. All right. I 
started with the silver first and then I went over it with this color here and I can't pronounce the name it's on the bottom let's see if it'll focus on it probably not I'll put a link to it um, in the description below um, I always kind of looked at it as like a gunmetal kind of color only it's a little bit more blue but anyway I'm gonna bring this up closer so you can see it they're they're silver but they've got the bluish on top which kind of makes it look more like it's um, oxidized a little bit or patinaed all right so I'm going to go ahead and put these away. Let me heat this up real quick and just give it a quick dry before I start adding color. This is just a piece of old plastic. I don't know what. I found it and I'm going to use it as my palette. This is an old cheap artist loft paintbrush. This is Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylic in Burnt Umber. But now remember, when you're doing mixed media, it's all about layers. So I'm going to be adding and then wiping away and then adding and wiping away. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It just kind of is what it is. Um, so, you know what? I need one more thing. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm just going to dab, not dab, I'm just going to paint over. Hmm. Now just on the metal itself, I'm going to kind of wipe that off a little bit maybe. Okay, so my burnt sienna, or burnt umber, excuse me. By Deco Art Media Fluid Acrylics has dried and that actually is the key to part of the process is letting things dry in between all right give this a good shake this is by golden and it's a golden fluid acrylic and this is quinacridone gold so I'm going to put some of this down here Again, my baby wipe. I kind of think of this as like liquid magic. I'm just going to get this all over the place. I'm going to let it pool in places. I don't care. And this is what I did to the cardboard. To the corrugated cardboard and this is the same thing that I did same process Let's see if I can pull this up so you can see it it's giving me a very nice rust color just remember it's all about the layers um, the other thing you want to do is you want to turn it just so you get in all the nooks and crannies let me dry this up and we're going to add our next color. We use the Quinn Gold. Now the next color I'm going to add, dun, 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 Burnt Sienna. I don't know, can you see how this is really starting to take on a bit of a metallic -y look to it? in the camera as I'm looking at it it's looking kind of like it's chocolate brown <laughs> but trust me it's not it is not now I'm going to take this burnt sienna So let me heat this, heat it up. Let me dry this up with my heat gun. 
and maybe I'll learn how to talk at the same time. And we'll be back. Let me bring that out. And my Liquitex heavy gel. I'm going to bring out a small spatula and my mini microbeads. So, I need to just kind of get a little bit on here. This one is mixed up a little bit. All right. Stick that in the water. Now this is going to be the interesting part. These are black microbeads by Recollections. Let's start with this part first. do have a tendency to go everywhere. They are very messy. I just think they will add a little something something to what I'm trying to do here. That's the reason why I'm doing this into this here to collect them because then that way I can put them back from whence they came. But there are some that are escaping. Awesome. Okay. Now. I'm going to set this aside to dry. This is probably going to take overnight to dry, but look at how beautiful that dried. Those are the micro dot, the uh, micro beads, and they just really add a really nice grunge to it. And actually, we're going to be doing something to that. But before we do anything to that, we're going to bring this back. And we're going to bring back our palette. And we're going to use some Sea Breeze by Americana. And I need some white. I need white, 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 white. All right, so I have Snow Titanium White by Americana and the Sea Breeze. The sea Breeze is one of my favorites. All right, so. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put down some of the sea breeze. And some of the white. I'll come out. And then oops some water down I'm gonna really wet that actually I want to use this okay now what I want to do I'm just going to take my paintbrush, I'm going to scrape it along the top, just like that. I'm going to scrape it, all right? And then I'm going to take my mini mister, I'm going to turn this like this, and I'm going to squirt. Yes, it makes a mess. Oops, let me help if I was sprayed it the right way. And 
it does get everywhere. It's got a little bit more in here. Got to make sure I'm pointing that the right direction. Goodness gracious. And I see I'm just going to keep rolling that around. And I'm also going to take a roll, paper towel roll and maybe just kind of scoop that up a little bit. And then I'm going to grab some more. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Get a good grip on this. And I'm just going to scrape, scrape, scrape. And I am going to make a mess. Now, again, as I said, this is all about layers. And I am going to continue to do this until I'm happy with the effect that it leaves. Let's see what's going on on this one here. Just going to shake it and move it. And all those little cracks and crevices. I'm going to take my, just do a quick roll, just a, a dab, a little dab will do ya. All right. So I'm going to continue this process until I'm happy with it. And I'm getting pretty close here pretty close to how I want it. So, wanna... so I'm going to dry this and then continue the process until the, it's just exactly how I want it so it looks nice and patinaed and I'll be back. Okay, this turned out really nice. That looks nice and grungy and patinaed. I love it. The gears look awesome on it. So now that we're done with this, I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to set this over to dry. And we're going to try the same technique here. Get a little bit of water on this. And I'm going to try and have this be a little bit more controlled because of where I'm going to be doing it. Try and do it here. I'm going to get these all grunged up a little bit here. All right, and then I'm going to take my water. Just kind of grudge it right on down. down here just like this there it is I dropped it Like I said, I just keep laying right until layering it until I get it just the way I want it. And I love that the micro beads are just adding some really great texture to this. Okay, look at how awesome this turned out came out beautiful absolutely beautiful now the next step 
is to put here, okay, I'm going to, this is tissue paper that has been, um, I used, uh, I got it in Happy Mail, I cut it up, I got it from Peg Robinson, and I believe that it has um, alcohol ink on it, I believe. So I'm going to lay this down right here. I'll just use some gel medium to attach it. Make sure that stays down real good. I don't want that lifting at all. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and glue the rest of these down, and I will be back when I'm done. All right, these are all glued down, and I use the heat gun to dry it. But these are the different parts of my heart, and it would be my hubby, my grandchildren, my children, my work family, my art family, and my extended family. So now, what I'm going to do is put my uh, microphone back on. <laughs> Luckily, it was down low enough. I hope you heard me. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring these back down. And this is going to come up like this. And this. Bend that down a little bit. So we won't lay flat. And you know what? I did go by real quick and touch up the back of these where there was anything showing. Now here I have our heart. I'm going to move this over to the side. I don't think I need my heat gun anymore. All right, I'm going to just lay this over like this, and I'm just going to peel up all this blue painter's tape that was on the back that were holding my pieces together. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right, let's go in the trash. In the trash. I want to just flip this over. One, two, three. Oh, come on now. Flip. And now. I got these pieces of the heart. So it's all there. There we go. All right, I'm going to move these up here now. I'm going to move this back down. Move these over here. It's like playing a puzzle right here on my desk. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each piece and glue them onto here. And I will be using my Liquitex matte gel. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process. You're not going to watch, want to watch me glue all this stuff down. It's very boring. But when I get towards the end, I'll turn the camera back on. So I will be back when I'm done gluing all of this on, or close to it. All right, we're down to the last one, number six. And here's the corresponding piece that goes on top. And I'm just going to take some gel. And I've laid um, a piece of um, printer paper, computer paper, on top of my design so that way I can be as messy as I want with the glue because I want a good stick. So I want a good amount of glue on here. And remember when you're gluing things, you glue both sides, put glue on both sides because glue sticks to glue best. And it's a lesson that I have learned in time over time. Even when you're using a glue stick, glue both sides, you will get a much better um, adhesion. Oh gosh, I'm probably totally out of frame, sorry. In 
through this entire process of making this project, I have not used my art guard. And I can tell you right now, my fingers are a mess. Okay, so I want to flip that like that, pull that down. I'm just going to lay that right on top and line it up. Make sure I have all my pieces where they have to be. Make sure that's not stuck in there. Pick it up if I have to. Just to line that up. And I have a baby wipe here just to kind of clean my edges up a little bit. Don't worry about the white paper behind there. I'm going to take that out. That's just to catch any excess glue. Okay, everybody. I think we are done. Yay. I want to show this off. The prompt for this was who occupies your space. And my space that I used was my heart. And I made it into a steampunk heart jigsaw puzzle. I love it. I think it turned out beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So I made these little tabs. If you lift the tab off, it lets you know who occupies my heart. It would be my hubby. My grandchildren. <laughs> Come on, get down there. Oh, I got a piece sticking up. Sorry. My children, my work family, my art family, and my extended family. So there we have it. Who occupies my space? Who occupies my heart? And that will do it for this challenge for my creative year. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that I was able to teach you a new technique or teach you um, something new. Um, I hope that I have inspired you to create something. Um, and most importantly, as I always say with all of my videos, please just be nice. It's really not that difficult. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great night. And I'll see you real soon.